Hi, I'm Robert Delacat. Welcome to an introduction to EKG interpretation from EMS Ed. This video assumes a little background in EKG interpretive knowledge, but not too much. We'll take you through some of the many basics, but mostly this is a video on rhythm recognition. If we wish to more fully understand what is going on in an EKG, we must have an understanding of anatomy and physiology, especially the heart's electrical system. We cover that in another video. Other videos include bundle branch blocks and AV blocks, P waves and PR intervals, the QRS complex, axis deviation, STEMIs, pharmacology, and lots, lots more. Our approach to EKG interpretation should always be a systematic one. We should consider and analyze the rate, the rate of the atria, the rate of the ventricles. Analyze the rhythm. Is it regular, regularly irregular, or irregularly irregular. Analyze the P waves. Are there P waves? Do we have a P wave for every QRS complex? Do we have a QRS for every P wave? Analyze the PR interval. Is the interval within normal parameters in length? Is the length constant? Analyze the QRS complex. Is it wide or is it narrow? Does it contain a physiological or pathological Q wave? Does it contain a delta wave? Again, sometimes things that are more germane in the setting of a 12-lead acquisition than in a 3. So now let's jump in. Before we know what is abnormal, we need to know what is normal. Again, let's be systematic. First, what is the rate? Well, we could count the number of complexes in a 6-second strip, multiply by 10, and we'd have our heart rate. But this is not a 6-second strip. No problem. Count the number of big boxes between R waves, divide that number into 300, and that is the heart rate. Let's try it. We're going to start with this R wave because it occurs right on the beginning of a big dark line. We'll measure from there to the next R wave. We can determine the rate by dividing 300 by the number of big boxes between successive R waves. So in this case, we have an R wave here. This is one big box, two, three, four big boxes. So if this R wave occurred there, four divided into 300 would be 75. However, it's beyond that point. If it were beyond that point to here, that would be five big boxes. Five into 300 is 60. So this R wave is somewhere between 60 and 75. Let's call it about 67 as a heart rate. Now let's look at the rhythm. Is it regular? And how would we know? We measured the distance between R waves again. We started this process by determining the rate. It's about four and a half big boxes between R wave. So let's take our calipers here and actually try to be a little bit more accurate. So we measure from there to there, successive R waves. Well, successive R waves seem to be about the same. Therefore, the rhythm is constant. Now let's look at the P waves. Do we have a P wave for each QRS? We have a P wave and a QRS, a P wave and a QRS, a P wave and a QRS. Yes, there appears to be a P wave for every QRS and a QRS for each P wave. Now let's look at the QRS complex. The QRS complex, in order to be within normal parameters, needs to be less than three little boxes. So let's take our calipers here, set it at three little boxes, or 0 0.12 seconds, and ask ourselves, is the QRS complex less than that? And it appears to be so. So we have a normal QRS complex. Were this a 12-lead EKG, we might look for evidence of a pathological Q wave or ST segment changes, things that we cover in another video. So what do we have here? We have a normal sinus rhythm. The rate is between 60 and 100, and there are no blocks or ectopy. So there you have it, a quick and systematic analysis of a single-lead EKG. Next, we will look at some basic dysrhythmias. I will give you about 30 seconds to name that rhythm before I give you my analysis. 
We'll play music to liven it up and also to distract you. So let's begin. Name that rhythm. This strip looks just like the last one, except what? It looks slower. The complexes are farther apart. Let's figure the rate. We'll find an R wave that's close to a dark line. This one looks good. And let's measure the rate. This is one big box, two, three, four, five. So five into 300 is 60. This is slower than 60 this would be 50. So between 50 and 60, let's call it a heart rate of about 54. It's sinus because there are P waves driving the beat and the rate is less than 60. P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS. The P waves are clearly driving the QRS complex. So what is the etiology of sinus bradycardia? Increased parasympathetic vagal tone, intrinsic disease of the SA node, drug effects, or it may be a normal finding in a healthy, well-conditioned athlete. The clinical significance is that it may result in decreased cardiac output, hypotension, angina, or CNS symptoms. In a healthy, well-conditioned person, however, it may have no significance. Treatment? Well, generally it's unnecessary unless hypotension or ventricular irritability is present. So there you have it sinus bradycardia. Let's try another one. Let's play Name That Rhythm. <laughs> 